Egypt. We're joined now by the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition in South Africa, uh, Minister Ibrahim Patel. Thank you so much for making the time. We had promised our viewers to be speaking to your counterpart in, South, uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, but uh, alas. Minister, thank you so much once again. This is the ninth installment. Has the bilateral engagement uh, yielded any results? Has it been beneficial? Well, good morning, uh, uh, dear to you and to the viewers. Uh, I think the numbers tell the story. We've had a significant growth in uh, exports uh, of uh, particularly agricultural products, but also cars from South Africa to Saudi Arabia. And of course, Saudi Arabia is still a very important source of oil for South Africa. So in that sense, I guess the, the easy answer is yes, it's yielded uh, results. But we think we can do so much more. We think that there's an enormous opportunity on the energy front. Saudi Arabia has been investing in renewable energy as a significant part of moving away from an oil-based economy. They focused on industrialization. And of course, they have quite significant sources of capital. The opportunity today and tomorrow is in these discussions to try to see how the South African economy can, can have, can attract more investment from Saudi Arabia and use some of the, the uh, abilities that they've developed in the energy market to address our own energy challenges. But we also see it as a, as a very significant market in the Middle East for particularly food and some manufactured products. We sell some um, uh, chemical products there and um, we think that the scope for deepening this relationship, creating more opportunities for South Africans to sell in that Middle Eastern market is enormous. And that's what we do today. I like that you're saying the numbers tell the story and yet uh, uh, just they look quite skewed, uh, you know, in Saudi Arabia's favor. Perhaps just give us a background, Minister, just in terms of when this engagement started. Where, where was uh, a trade between so South Africa and Saudi Arabia or did it start from a zero base? No, indeed, it did not start from a zero base. Because we are a big importer of oil, we only have one domestic oil producer, that's Sasol, uh, that transforms um, coal to oil through the, the uh, technologies that South Africans are both proud of and very familiar with. And because uh, Saudi Arabia is such a significant oil exporter, ordinarily we would expect that trade balance to favor an oil exporter. What we're doing, though, over the last number of years, we've been increasing our exports of products and we're trying to diversify our, uh, our, our basket, <clears throat> not only by, by selling uh, raw fruit, but also increasingly selling more manufactured products. And the storyline on the automobile industry is particularly important. We're selling more cars um, to, to Saudi Arabia now, and there is opportunity in other industrial products. Services is also significant. South Africa is a big producer of services. Our engineering and other capabilities have already been used widely in the Middle East and there's scope to do even more in the period ahead. We're now quite keen to sell more red meat to Saudi Arabia. That can help farmers and farm workers in South Africa. And the discussion now is how to in fact address that gap. It will be a gap that will favor Saudi Arabia because we're such a big importer of oil, but we can begin to close that gap. Some progress has been made. There's a lot more opportunity of what we can do. Minister, there's an urgency in South Africa for economic growth and energy uh, solutions in particular. This administration has put a lot of invest, uh, 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 emphasis on attracting investment but in the background we have that conversation uh, about an imminent grey listing how are you in, uh, incorporating this into your conversations so let's start with the renewable energy side uh, one of the companies uh, that will be uh, on this visit uh, is a company in the renewable energy uh, space our biggest immediate challenge to economic growth and to industrialization is addressing our energy supply, getting it stable, uh, uh, addressing the question of the price of energy and reliability of energy is quite uh, key. So we're talking to a number of different uh, players globally. The Saudi Arabian companies are one example of that. 
Uh, as regards the grey listing matter, it's really addressing issues of money laundering, ensuring that our legal regime don't permit people to hide the source of their money against the kind of broad consensus we've reached globally but it about can affect, open and transparent But systems. Minister, it can affect the very investment you seek uh, from Saudi Arabia for argument's sake. Yes, it does. And it can affect um, even the ability of South African banks to operate effectively. And therefore, the National Treasury has put uh, together a bill that is, um, uh, will be uh, taken to Parliament to address some of the gaps uh, on the money laundering side. They relate to essentially ensuring that our banking system and our disclosure laws uh, puts sufficient transparency there <clears throat> that nobody can hide the source of their wealth. You and I think we'll get past that one. In, in talking to the Saudi uh, government, uh, we see there there's an enormous appetite and, and interest in investing more in South Africa. So I think we've got to address our problem. The question of grey listing is a, is a matter of some urgency. And at the same time, we've got to talk to investors about the, uh, the opportunities in the South African market. Conversations such as this one uh, just... Uh invariably veer towards big business what how you incorporate in conversations about smaller businesses and what kind of trade they can have with saudi arabia we've got to be able to hunt in packs as they say when we break into say the meat market yes we'll have the big players there they've got the scale they've got the muscle they've got the size but part of it is to ensure that they also bring smaller players with them the same goes for the broader food markets. So I've met with all the members of the South African Saudi Arabian Business Council, which we're launching, and uh, they have agreed that our, our uh, proposal as a country must be based, our value proposition must be based on bringing small and medium-sized businesses into the export market. We've seen some uh, small success on niche, uh, little niche products. We've got to be able to scale those up now. I know we've got to let you go. The program is about to start, Minister, but just a quick one. Uh, an aspiring business person or an active business person in South Africa watching this interview and wondering how they can uh, be part of this conversation. Is there a possibility for that? Yes, indeed. Um, we will be announcing the names of the South African Saudi Arabian Business Council. These are people from the private sector. They'll have an experience in business and they will be available to small and medium enterprises, to South African business people. And of course, um, by the end of the meeting tomorrow, we'll put out a communique that can be accessed on www.dtic.gov.za. Uh, uh, I'll repeat that again, www.thedtic.gov.za. That would provide more information about what we're seeking to do. There are also uh, regional offices of the DTIC or the IDC or the National uh, Empowerment Fund in different parts of the country. And businesses are, are welcome to contact them. Let's thank you for your time this morning, uh, Minister of uh, Trade, Industry and Competition, Ibrahim uh, Patel, talking to us about that uh, interaction with Saudi Arabia.